Okay, so the most important thing is you need to make sure that the device you want to remove a block from the network has a live session currently. Otherwise, eyes would know nothing about the device and would not be able to remove it. So let's go over to the live authentication page. And at this point, we should already have our Windows or the main computer test machine should have already authenticated to the network. So you can see right here, lab minutes with the username admin1. Right, and it's at the state of permit all. So let me bring up console to that right here and make sure we currently have internet and we do. All right, and to look at the live session, you can go to this button right here, it says show live session, and the session is this one right here. Although we might be seeing two because I believe the other one is for wireless. Although I recognize the wired or the LAN MAC address, which is this MAC address right here. So we know that live session is active. So now to mark a IP or MAC address as quarantine, where we're going to do that is under the operation and endpoint protection service. Okay, I can also just to grab the MAC address from the switch as well. So if you to show our session on port 19, you can see that we have the MAC address right there, although the format, let's see if we can use that format. If not, we'll change it. Let me just bring up notepad. There. Okay, so we can see right here there are two options for IP address and the MAC address. And we can certainly try a non existing IP. So just do some random IP such as 64.200 and submit. And obviously, those uh, there's no matching session with those IP. That's why I came back and said no active session found with this IP address. Okay, so the same thing goes with the MAC address. So looks like we need it needs to be a certain format. So let's do this. All right. If you know those are the valid MAC address, but if you enter an invalid MAC address, you get the same warning or errors returning from ICE that is not found. Okay. So the first thing you want to try is to quarantine our LAN connection on the test computer. So that's the correct MAC address. And here, as far as the operation, we have quarantine, unquarantine, or shutdown. Shutdown being shutting down the ports where the device is connected to. So we're going to start off with quarantining the MAC address. We we'll hit submit. You can see down below here the request was successful. We also see some lock messages on the switch as well, as far as the authentication change, authorization change. Authentication still succeeded. However, you can see right here that the VLAN 63 has been kind of forced upon our device with that MAC address. And if you go and look at our operations, live authentication, refresh, you can see right here, again, blank identity means it's usually a dynamic authorization or COA. So the EPS features relies upon a COA that ICE issue towards the network access device, which is a switch in this scenario to remove the device from the network. So if you look under that uh, lock right here, as you can see dynamic authorization succeeded. And we can also see a Cisco AV pair as far as the session ID that got issued to the switch. Okay, we already looked at the switch output and here, just the line on top of that, the admin user admin one with that MAC address we just put in quarantine, came back and the authorization profile of wire deny all has been applied to that device. Okay, so on the switch to video show, actually just do up arrow. Now, before we had a permit all, now it has become a deny all. So that means it match our uh, exception authorization policy that we created for wired as well as the VLAN 63 get pushed out. And now the particular MAC address is placed uh, under that VLAN. Okay, so that means if you go back to our host here, I can see that little exclamation as far as connectivity. So it has completely lost connectivity on, from the network. All right, so what we're going to test next is to move our test machine from port 19 to different port uh, 20 and see what's going to happen. Okay, so let me do that. Okay, so since it's a VM, it didn't really take the port downs on port 19. So the MAC address of the machine might get, or the VM might get stuck. So what I need to do is to shut down that port to kind of clear out the MAC address. And then we also need to disable and enable the interface. So disable, just to kind of force it through the authentication one more time, the adapter setting, and then enable. 
you can see we get some activity here on the switch and let's go and take a look at the on the ice all right as you can see right here user admin one with the same mac address came back trying to access the network this time instead of port 19 it becomes port 20 but regardless of that i still enforcing wire deny all on that mac address okay so just because user moved from one port to another i still it's not letting this user on on the mac address rather on the network because everything is forced upon the identification of the device and not so much of the username all right so now to bring the device back onto the network what you need to do instead of quarantine we're just going to reverse that and unquarantine the device and submit see the request is also successful let's refresh again coa went out so let's see how is it any different this time it's still the audit session id Cisco AV pair that's got sent out to the switch. And now that the MAC address has been unquarantined, the device came back, but this time has been granted with wire permit all authorization profile. And at this point, we should be able to get back onto the internet right there. Okay, so you can see that the quarantine actions always follows the MAC address or the IP of the device, regardless of the where the device is connected to in the network. All right, so next we're going to try next option, or our last option, which is shutdown. So we're going to issue a shutdown to the device. Again, request was successful, and we saw some lock messages in the switch that the port 20, which is where our device is currently connected to, went admin down. And this is a result of the COA that ICE issue to the switch right there. So let's take a look at the COA. This time, in addition to the session ID, we also have a subscriber command attribute with the disable host port. And this is how ICE command the switch to shut down the switch port. Okay, now just to show you that shutdown action is actually different from the quarantine, I'm going to move the our test machine back from port 20 back to port uh, 19. Before we do that, let's make sure internet obviously is totally disconnect because the port has been shut down. Okay, so now the our test machine has been moved back to port 19, which is going to make sure that we force the authentication one more, one more time with disable and enable the network interface while the port 20 remains shut down. So if you do show interface 20, you can see it's admin down. And I believe I still have the port 19 down as well. So let me do no shut on that. Okay, so dot one X is running. Give it a couple more seconds here. Okay, we get a successful authentication. And now if we go back to uh, authentication lock, you can see here, our device came back now on port 19, but actually get the permit all. So just by shutting down the port, it doesn't really place the device MAC address into quarantine. Okay, so shut down, just simply shut down the port with no further action. So it's a one-time thing. And obviously the port, once it's shut down, it has to be no shut manually since there's no way currently for COA to no shut the port. All right, so now you guys know the difference between quarantine and shutdown. So use those appropriately. And that's our test for wired. Next, we're going to do a test for wireless. To test wireless, let me disable the LAN interface on our test machine and then enable our wireless interface. Okay, so hopefully we have things set up so that it connects to, let's see, and we have it connected to our LM internal, which is our SSID that we want. And on our authentication lock here, we should be seeing right there with that MAC address for our wireless. So if you go back and test our internet at this point, we should have internet and right there we do. Okay, so let me write down the MAC address for this so we can use that for our quarantine action right there. And then going back to this page, put in the MAC address, change to quarantine. So now we're gonna try to quarantine a wireless device. We'll click submit, see request was successful. And then coming back here on our authentication lock, we see the COA went out. This time, instead of going to a switch, it went out to our LM to BLC or WS9 controller one. And it's not so much different from the one to the switch with the session ID, admin reset. And now the device has been put under the WLAN deny all authorization profile. 
and we also have the WLAN VLAN quarantine as well. So at this point, it should have been switched to VLAN 63, and we can verify that on our WiseLAN controller. We click on the client, and that's the MAC address. Let's verify by the username here with the admin one. And you can see now it's associated to VLAN interface 63 and VLAN ID 63, as well as having the name ACL LM deny all enforced on it. Coming back here, we should no longer have any internet access, and we don't. Now, if you're trying to disconnect, let's say, from the SSID, and then reconnect, right, and then come back here to monitor the activity. As you can see, ICE doesn't even let the device, a wireless device, reconnect. Okay, so unlike the wired, which the user will be able to successfully connect, but then have the authorization profile deny all placed on it and switch to the VLAN with wireless, we can't even connect on the wireless once it's been quarantined. Okay, so let's redo or undo that option. Unquarantine on that same MAC address. Disconnect and let's try to reconnect. As you can see, the device can once again reconnect with full access to the network once it's been unquarantined. Okay, the last thing that, although not so much relevant, but I just want to show you, which is the shutdown action. Usually shut down with the switch, it's shutting down the port, but it's not really applicable to wireless, but I just want to show you anyway. So you can see as soon as you hit submit, it said operation is not permitted for wireless medium. Okay, because the concept of the connection or access to the network is different between Y and wireless. So there's not really a point to shut down for wireless. All right, so now you see how the EPS actually works for both Y and wireless. To me, this is very similar to shunning an IP on the IPS. If you're familiar with IPS, basically inputting the IP and then the IP will be blocked forever unless you remove it from the list. So the concept is very similar to that. Okay, so that wraps up our video on ICE 1.2 with Endpoint Protection Service. You can visit our website to view an extensive list of our lab videos and sign up to get access to additional lab contents. Thank you for watching labmiss.com, and I'll see you guys in the next videos.